What is this? This is a Duplo miniature golf course. It's a Paw Patrol Adventure Bay mini putt course that I themed after my uh, son's favorite TV show. That is awesome. And this is made with primarily Duplo, right? Yeah, it's about 22,000 Duplo pieces. So uh, most of it's Duplo. There's a little bit of system brick here and there just to fill in a couple of gaps and when needed, but tried to keep it as Duplo as possible. So the, the one question sticking in my head, and I, I'm sure the, the heads of viewers, is uh, where does one acquire this much Duplo, or how did you suddenly run into this much Duplo? Was it happenstance? You know, it was, uh, I call it fate, call it destiny, but uh, I was asked to build a giant dinosaur last year for a company, and I'm like, well, I don't know if I can do it, but at the same day, somebody also offered to sell me this giant collection of green Duplo. And so I, I, I was like, wow, that's totally crazy that this happened in the same day. And so I bought all the green Duplo. And for a really, it was a really good deal because that guy bought it over a decade ago and he never did anything with it. He always had these plans to use it for something cool and awesome. And he sold it to me saying, I'll sell it to you at the same great deal that I bought it at, but you have to build giant awesome things with it. You can't brick link it or anything like that. So I'm like, that's fine. That's all I wanted to do. And that's what I've been doing with it since. It's like, with great Duplo power comes great Duplo responsibility. Ah, that, I like, that should be a t-shirt. Yeah, there you go. That's right. So what has it been uh, before this? Just, just real quick. Oh, it's been a dinosaur, a giant frog. It's been a pair of spaceships from Star Trek. It's been, uh, last year at Brick World, I had it as a giant bar. So you could sit down and... Uh, we had stools made of Duplo, the barn was made of Duplo, we had little taps, we had a cooler underneath. So, But this year, after, I ha after um, some words from, um, from Mr. Kevin Hinkle, who told me that the Duplo people weren't too crazy about the way that I use Duplo for the brand. So I thought, okay, I'll take it, I'll do a totally kid-friendly theme, I'll go, and this is my, show, my son's favorite show, it's geared for the same demographic as Duplo fans. It's not, it's not on brand because there isn't a Paw Patrol brand licensing with uh, Duplo, but most importantly, I did this because just like the bar last year, I wanted to find a way to bring people together in a different, innovative way. You know, the theme this year is Unite, and I wanted this to be a way to unite people together and have something fun and different and a, a different way to play with Lego, a different creative and exciting experience. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. So I guess um, maybe before we uh, run through and play a few holes, yeah. could you just like give us a little bit of an overview of the overall design and sure. uh, what we're looking at as like a, a macro level? So we have the first hole here, which is the windmill hole. And it looks like it's a pretty basic straight through hole. The biggest challenge is that the ball is, to, is a Duplo ball designed for the Duplo education tube system. And it is a very precise system. So getting that ball, the Duplo ball to fit in that hole is a lot more challenging than you think. I've done a, I've got a hole in one once. So then it'll come out, after, it'll go under the windmill, come out the other end, and then you tee off again for hole two. And this is the bigger hole. The whole layout's about 256 square foot, and hole number two is about 230 square foot. Uh, so it's most of the most of the track here. And so you have two different ways. You can either go the the trickier but clearer way through the train uh, under the train br uh, crossing, or snake through the town, make it past City Hall, past the the runaway train there, and get to the corner, the far far corner where you can see the start of the Duplo Bridge. This is the bridge that the Paw Patrol characters ride out on every episode to get to, when they leave, their lookout tower, which is where the final hole is. So, you have to get it, not up the slide, a lot of people ask you how to get in the slide, you actually got to get it right in the main door of the, of the lookout tower to get the ball home to be with the rest of the Paw Patrol. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So without further ado, uh, let's, uh, what do you think, this is the first one? How about that? All right. Actually, you know what? I said let's go do the second. This one, second, second one. Second one's second a little one. more interesting and All right. a little easier. All right. I like. I like that. I like that. All right. So I'll just just teeing off here, teeing up. I'm gonna go for between the house and the city hall here. Oh, didn't quite get aware. That's well, not too bad. I'm not too unhappy with it. All right. Now, one of the issues here that we're ha we have is the air conditioning is right above us. That's the AC, baby. That's the AC, and it is 
quite powerful, and these balls are so light. There's no core in them like a golf club. A golf ball would have it. Oh, right into Rubble's bulldozer. Oh. It's like the sand pit of this course? That's right. That's right. It's one of the hazards. The dogs. The dog statues are definitely hazards. So there's two stroke. All right. All right, not too bad. I got in the corner. Ideally, a little further away from the wall would be nicer, but I'm going to try it. You got to get up. You have a nice little bumper here. Yeah, this is... Now, actually, um, a buddy of mine from Toro Lug, Adam Hollings, devised this but the making the Duplo bumpers there by sticking just a little tile on there between the two uh, Duplo plates. Oh. You know what? So I'm going to use the, the mini putt rules where you can get one club length away from the... the, bar, the bar. Oh. Well, this is where I get a little sneaky. Nice. All right, so now it's going down the track. And is that gravity powering that? It sure is. I've just got the, the each length of the train tracks just a little shorter to make the bridge come together. Is it going to go in the hole? No. Oh, maybe. it's That's magical air conditioning. Air conditioning. All right, here we go into the lookout tower. Ta-da. And then, as you can see, it comes back out. This comes out back out so that way you can just keep playing. It's a never-ending cycle. Infinite loop. It's a, you know, Lego has infinite creative possibilities, and this one we just want to have infinite, uh, infinite Duplo golf fun. And uh, for those of uh, out there watching this uh, and want to see more of your work and what you do, you where, where do they go? Well, I've got one of the, amongst the many billboards that I have here, and I'm, you can get a shot of it in later. But I've got my logo as Brickman Graham, and you can go to BrickmanGraham.com and check out all other Duplo creations and other things that I do as well. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Yeah, and actually I just want to say one more thing is that um, I'm actually dedicating this model this weekend to my dad. It's Father's Day weekend. He actually just passed away this October. And I built one of the reasons I built this was because um, my dad, when in his life, always put, our, put us as uh, us kids first. I have two siblings. He was a single dad. And... Uh, he passed away far too young. He's only 64 years old. What if not only so not only Father's Day weekend, but this year tomorrow's Father's Day is also his birthday. Would have been his 65th birthday, and so um, I contemplated should I come to Brick World or not? I don't know. But my family all said you got to go. Your my dad would have my dad would have been the, the first person to say, of course you got to go and do this and share this with people. Awesome. And so I built this. And I built it based on my son's favorite thing because my dad always did stuff that was our favorite thing. He always put us first. And so I thought I got to put my son's favorite thing first. So that's my, that's my little sob story. But it's really, I, it's really the, the heart behind the whole build as well. That's awesome and touching. And you have had a lot of people with a lot of smiles around here all weekend. And, that's, and that would, I know that that uh, would make my dad very proud. He's very happy to see all the joy that it's bringing through, my, through this creation. He was an artist himself. And he would have loved nothing more to see. He did a lot of volunteer work coaching hockey and baseball, even not with, even when it wasn't even his kids. So it's great to be able to carry that spirit here at Brick World. And, you know, everyone here is volunteering their time. It's that same spirit my dad had of just, just wanting to wow people and make sure that these kids have an opportunity to see awesome things. And I just want to do my part as well. Thank you for doing what you do. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first annual Brick World Invitational. Here we go, off to the, f the first hole at the windmill. Teeing off. We got a lefty. Oh, hits the first hazard, the flowers. Goes right into the corner underneath Yumi's farm. Headed towards the final, the hole under the windmill. Oh, just a little too far. Kenny, now, oh, the incompetence is staggering. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Oh, just, and does it come out? Yes, success. Oh, get, but can he get it back on the tee? All right, here he goes. He's going to go, he's going to go for the more challenging railroad way. Oh, doesn't quite make it under that track. Headed towards the train, crashes right into the train. Phenomenal incompetence. Makes it to the corner. Racing through, can't quite get it up. Oh, gets it down the bridge. It's going. It's headed towards the final hole. Oh, one, no, not quite. Just, uh, very well done.
Did I follow any of the rules? Not a single one, but it's Duplo Golf, so it doesn't really matter. It's just for having fun.